Welcome to my secret channel, Emerald, where I ramble about whatever it is I want to talk about in the laziest, most boring format possible. It's not an analysis. It's just an experience. I think that's my new intro. Hopefully I can remember that. 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim. If you have not played this game and have any vague interest in playing it whatsoever, uh, I highly recommend that you do because I don't think this game sold super well which is pretty unfortunate because it's a pretty amazing, amazing game. So if you have any interest, I am going to talk spoilers in this, so please don't watch it if you have any interest. If you don't care one bit or maybe just need someone to talk you into it uh, by spoiling you, which I guess is a possibility, um, well then I guess watch this. So I played the game purely off of a YouTuber known as Fither's Recommendation, F-I-T-H-E-R. Um, I actually mentioned him in a Dang and Rampa video too. He's already the most referenced person on this channel. But he praised this game so highly and said so many things about it that were just like key words for me to get me interested. Like he said it had like a complex storyline, had like mecha stuff, which is which is kind of hit or miss, but I, I usually like mecha. I'm open to it. Uh, Sci-fi and uh, time travel too. I like all those things. I'm, uh, I'm into all those things. It's uh, also like a, a visual novel sort of-esque game. I'd say it's like a, a good mixture between like a strategy game and like a visual novel slash point and click. I think that's kind of how the story sections play. Um, I think that's a turn off for a lot of people and that's kind of sad because it's oh, it's so fun. It's such a I, I think of it more as just like an interactive story like an interactive show in that sense with a, a gameplay segment that is really fun by the way there's no weak part of this game i love the gameplay just as much as i love the story and the characters so i guess again another spoiler warning um i'm gonna talk spoilers for the most part not i'm probably not gonna get too hardcore into spoilers but i will be mentioning some stuff but i guess first off i'll talk about the format of the game so the format of the game it has, it's called 13 Sentinels because there's 13 protagonists. And you play through each of these 13 characters' own personal stories and they all intertwine. They're all basically fighting for the sake of humanity, to save humanity, in these things called Sentinels, which are just giant mechs, which I do enjoy. I know a lot of people don't like them or think they're lame, but surprisingly, I really enjoy it. Anyways, uh, all these characters, they think they're from different time periods, uh, but they all end up fighting together in the final battle. Pretty dope stuff. So when I heard about the complexity of this game, oh, it was, it was not wrong. It is not wrong. There are 13 characters, and the timeline is pretty insane because a lot of the timelines are really, like, all over the place. Like, one character... Like, I, once you really play through it, you'll start to realize that um, you'll, you'll get a good idea of what the timeline is like. But then some parts just won't really, <laughs> they won't really make sense. Like I, many times I had myself, I questioned myself asking, how is this character here when they were there in this other time? Or, you know, stuff like that. I think the most confusing one was probably um, A. Sekigahara, gray haired kid, right? Super cool dude. Um, he was so, he felt so involved in almost everyone's storyline that I had a hard time piecing together where he was. But there's a good, a really good like benchmark. And I think the game does a lot of stuff like this on purpose to help you remember. I, the game actually does a fantastic job at making sure you can piece together when uh, things happen in the timeline. So for A, this is a spoiler for A's character. Well, I mean, it's not really a spoiler. It's literally at the very beginning of his story branch. But he loses his memories. So you can always, um, in other characters' stories, you can always see, oh, this is A before his um, memory loss, and this is him after his memory loss. So there's a lot of things like that in every character's story where you can tell where they are in their story when you're playing a different character's story, but it can get pretty complex at times. I love the format. I think I love overly complex storytelling, and I guess this is unpopular, because Kingdom Hearts gets made fun of this a lot, because it's apparently hyper complex. I've never played Kingdom Hearts, but the only reason I'm even interested in playing it at all is because I've been told that it's really complex, to the point where it's probably 
kind of stupid at times from what I've heard. Um, but that's I find that interesting. I love when a game makes me work, it makes me put in effort to get the full understanding. One uh, series I'm going to talk about very, very soon, hopefully, is the Drakengard and Nier series. Drakengard and Nier, you have to go out of your way to fully understand the world building of that series and the timeline. And that's why I love it. It gets me so invested. And I think that's why I, I, I'm, I don't really like when people uh, trash on stuff for having complex storylines as if it's a negative thing. It's not a negative thing. Why should it be a negative thing? I don't think it should. I mean, it, I feel like with complex storylines, you you actually want to invest more time into it to you know get the full understanding. But regardless of that, I, the story is so fun. It's hard to even spoil the story because just so much happens that it's. I don't even know how I could possibly explain everything without sounding like an absolute maniac. But regardless. Um, I also want to talk about the gameplay. So the story, the way the story is set up, I love. I think it's great. There's a lot of, um, okay, there's a lot of like memory loss. There's a lot of like personality changes. There's a lot of like duplicate characters with different names, like characters that look the exact same. They look identical, but they have different names. Uh, there's a lot of confusion. You will be hit with so many mysteries at the beginning of every character's story branch and you'll be surprised at how well of a job the game does at, um, leaving hints and clues for you to piece things together it's it's really not as overwhelming as you may think now i did have to pause and reread a lot of things but it's actually i i have fun doing that type of stuff i i really do and i think a lot of other people would too if they open their open themselves up to the idea of playing something like a visual novel even though it's not really a visual novel right i don't know what the official genre is but it's definitely niche but you know maybe i should make a video about what it even means to be niche and why it's very sad when some things are put under the label of being niche but that's aside the point before i go into the main thing i want to discuss are like the characters individually because that's the most fun part of this game um but i want to talk about the gameplay first and foremost so um the gameplay is super enjoyable i would describe it as a good mixture between like a strategy game kind of like fire emblem but it's kind of okay think about this think of fire emblem mixed with the active turn-based system that like chrono trigger and early final fantasy games have and mix it with a tower defense type of game those are okay so i love strategy games i like turn-based type of stuff it's not entirely turn-based that's why i compared it more to the atb system of like chrono trigger right and i like tower defense games i haven't played a ton of them but whenever i do play them i think they're super fun so the gameplay was just really up my alley and i i kind of want to say that they purposely designed the gameplay like this i feel like Vanillaware the, are the people that uh, made this game, I believe. It was published by Atlas. And I think Vanillaware probably just knew that people that uh, like this style of game also probably like this style of combat. Uh, I guess that maybe that makes it extra niche, but it's whatever, right? It's so enjoyable. So um, there are 13 characters you can play as. And the game does a great job at making sure that you use pretty much all of them. And it does a good job at making all of them pretty viable. There are only two characters, maybe three, that I think I might say weren't as great as the rest. But it might have just been because I didn't pay as much attention to them. So I would say Renya was probably not super great. And Hijiyama was maybe not super great. But they were kind of underleveled for me. So maybe that was my fault. And maybe, maybe Natsuno, which is unfortunate because she's one of, if not my favorite character in the game. But for the most part, they're all pretty much viable. And I, I had a fun time coming up with like different strategies. Um, one thing I always do, I do this in every game that allows me to do this. I, for some reason, consistently love uh, characters that have abilities to make things fight for them. So in the game, there are like sentry guns, basically. And there are also these things called interceptors, which they're like, think of like a drone that functions similarly to like a homing missile 
I guess. I don't know. It seeks and destroys things, I guess. I, I don't know. But some, in some of the later parts, I would just spam sentry guns and interceptors and, like, defense, and a bunch of, like, defensive stuff and just sit back and, like, win. I don't know. I, I, I enjoyed coming up with, like, strategies like that. And I guess the game technically wasn't too hard, though, because I played on the hardest difficulty the entire time. And I pretty much S ranked every single, every single battle except for the very last one, I think, because I didn't have to S rank it to get like the, the secret mission files or whatever they were. But I guess I, I don't have too much to say about the gameplay besides that, other than I really loved it. I really love the gameplay. It it suits me a lot. It's very much so a uh, type of gameplay that I like. Maybe not a, a lot of other people would though. But the main thing I want to talk about, and I don't want this video to be too long, because I really could talk about this for a while. So I'm going to talk about what I think about pretty much all the characters. So I have a tier list pull up. I'm not going to like show the tier list or anything. I'm not even going to rank them. I'm just using this to, like reference the characters. Um, but let's start with let's start with I guess the main character Juro. So I guess I'm not a huge. F I guess Juro would probably be on the lower side of me in terms of like ranking my favorite characters. I would say I love the cast though. I love the vast majority of the characters. I even like Juro. Like he has some pretty good moments. I definitely don't dislike him, but I would say he's probably probably like my second least favorite. He's definitely not my least favorite. And I'll talk about my least favorite soon enough. But Juro was kind of interesting because he had some serious, he got into like a really bad accident in the Sentinels in one of the fights that took place in 2020. And that messed up his memory so bad. He actually fell in love with Megumi during this time. And also the reasoning why he probably fell in love with Megumi is kind of interesting. We'll get to that later. Um, so because of his head trauma, uh, he lost all of his memories and that horribly affected his relationship with Megumi. And so that's a really big part of Megami's story, and you'll see how a lot of these things tie in. Yeah, I, I, I don't have much to say about Jiro. He's, he definitely comes off as a more generic sort of protagonist. Um, the coolest thing about Jiro is not actually Jiro Kurabe, but Jiro Izumi, who is essentially the same person. He's actually, okay, I, I, is he technically the real Juro? I don't even know. I still have a lot of questions about this game. I don't fully understand everything, but I, I think I have a decent understanding. Juro Izumi is essentially Juro Kurabe, but also different, <laughs> right? They're different, but the same. Uh, but Juro Izumi is cool because throughout the game, when he does show up, he's literally a consciousness and he takes place, uh, he takes many different forms. I think he takes four, like three, three different forms. His actual human form, he takes the form of Fluffy the cat, who is legitimately one of my favorite characters in the game and then Kyuta who is Jiro Kurabe's friend supposedly yeah <laughs> right but Jiro Izumi was one of the coolest characters in the game I enjoyed him so much I enjoyed how much the game like vilified is that a word villainified how much they they made him out to be scary and dangerous to be a villain you shouldn't go anywhere near him but he actually had the probably he actually had the best resolution for everyone by the end of the game and one of the coolest things about this game is you're presented with three different character philosophies basically D three different resolutions you have Juro Izumi's resolution you have Chihiro Morimura's resolution and you have Ida whose name I, I forgot his full name but Ida Tetsuya Ida that's what it was and actually I don't even fully understand what Ida's resolution actually was whatever it was it wasn't as clear-cut as Izumi and Morimura's but Izumi um he definitely has he had the how do I say it the I guess he had the best possible outcome res, sort of resolution compared to Morimura so Morimura was actually one of the more interesting one of the most interesting characters because she wanted to fulfill the what the Aegis project which essentially would freeze all time and would only allow all would only allow the sentinel pilots to to remain living in that world everyone else would die and i guess 
it wasn't really that bad of a thing because by the end of the game, you know, this is a major spoiler. So if you've already listened this far, you should just stop. But for the people that have played the game, yeah, those are all just NPCs. Yeah, yeah, like the, what, 1.2 million people? They're all NPCs. They're not real people. Morimura was definitely more of a defeatist. And it was nice to be able to contrast her with Izumi, who was actually working towards, uh, even though we had questionable methods, who's actually working towards the best possible outcome. So I really like that sort of battle of ideology there. That was a lot of fun. Um, moving on, because I just talked about Jura a lot. Let's move on, because I, I don't want this to be too long. Um, Iori. I would actually say Iori's super cute, but I would say she's probably one of the more boring characters. And don't worry, we're going to get to the more exciting characters later. I do like her, for sure. And her personal story focused a lot more on her romance with A. Sekigahara. And frankly, I'm having a little bit of a hard time remembering a lot. I don't have much to say about Iori, other than she's cute and I like her. Moving on. Um, let's talk about... Let's talk about A. A is extremely cool. I like him a lot. Probably my second favorite male character in the game. He was cool, probably to the point of being cliche, with his bike and whatnot. But he was so involved with everyone, <laughs> with everyone's story. Like, I'm looking at the characters here, and he showed up in, like, almost all of their stories, I think, in some way. He definitely felt like the most involved character, to me personally, at least, compared to someone like Renya, who really didn't show up hardly at all in anyone's story. It's like, whenever a character was in trouble, or about to, like, you know, die from an android, like, A would just show up and then just save everyone. And it felt like he did that multiple times. He was all over the place. He traveled... I feel like he probably traveled through the most amount of time periods compared to some of the other characters, right? So I enjoyed A a lot. I just thought he was really cool. Um, let's go to Keitaro. Keitaro might be... I think Keitaro is probably my favorite male character. So Keitaro is so interesting, especially from an American perspective, because Keitaro believes that he is... Um, living in the 19, in 1940s Japan, you know, in the middle of World War II, and he is hired, or he is selected to operate a Sentinel, which is supposedly this super top secret weapon that's going to save Japan from the Americans <laughs> uh, in World War II. Like it's it's their last, uh, what's it's their last resort or whatever, and this is what's going to save them. That's that's pretty interesting playing from an American perspective. Uh, and then the whole 1940s era, his whole city just gets destroyed and he has to go to the 1980s. And so you're living as Keitaro in the 1980s who, you know, he starts reading through some of the history books and he sees that, oh, Japan just got, Japan got bombed twice by America. And we lost the and they lost the war, and yet Japan managed to bounce back this hard despite that. And so his first instinct is, well, I got to go back to the 1940s and turn the tides of the war, but he can't really do that. <laughs> so it's really interesting playing this from an American perspective because you know I you know our country is the one that did that, right? So it's it's kind of, it's a little awkward, but I don't know. It's it, I didn't take any. I don't know. I, I didn't feel too weird about it, right? But uh, Keitaro, another thing that makes him interesting is he seems like one of the most regular human type of characters in the game. He's pretty unaware of a lot of the things that happen uh, that are happening throughout the story compared to someone like A who just is hyper-involved with everything and knows about a lot of the characters' plans. Keitaro, meanwhile, is, like, trying to be a family man. You know, his little sister, who he believes his little sister is, Iori, even when he learns that... Or Chihiro, I mean, not Iori. Chihiro. Um, even when he learns that Chihiro is not actually his little sister, like, he still views her as a little sister. He can't help it. He's a family man. He's such a family man. I love him so much. And I will say, one thing I love about this game is definitely just how every character pretty much ended up in a romance. And it made sense as to why every character had a romance 
for the most part by the end of the game. It absolutely makes sense why. But uh, Keitaro pretty much ended up with Natsuno. And I, I don't usually ship characters too much. Like, I can enjoy uh, romance. I enjoy uh, romance in anime and games and stuff. But, like, I enjoy Keitaro and Natsuno together a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I love that. I love that dynamic a lot. That's super fun. So, yeah, Keitaro, I'd probably say, is my favorite male character in the game. Uh, let's move on to... Let's move on to Megumi. Megumi was one of the most fun characters in the game. I think... Okay, well, not actually fun in terms of her... I guess in terms of the actual, like, content, right? Because it's technically kind of... It's technically pretty bleak. But... Megumi is, Megumi is probably one of my favorite characters, which is I, I probably controversial. I imagine a lot of people don't like her um, because she's kind of crazy, kind of clingy, kind of desperate for Juro. But I really enjoyed her. I thought she had one of, if not the most entertaining story branch in the game. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. She just went around shooting all these people, injecting them with nano machines, And she had to confront herself with the idea that she wasn't doing it for the reasons that she tried to tell herself she was. She told herself she was doing that because she wanted to save Juro, but in reality she had to admit that it was actually just her being selfish. And I would say her relationship with Fluffy, the cat, was so fun. That was one of my favorite, some, some of my favorite interactions in the game. Some of my favorite dialogue are just from those two. Those two are legitimately some of my favorite, some of my favorite characters in the game. I don't have too much to say outside of that, so let's go ahead and move on. Let's go to, I guess, okay, let me mention BJ, which is absolutely hilarious that his name is BJ. What an unfortunate life. Uh, but BJ is essentially, you know, Keitaro, but he's just just cute little robot. He helps out. He does stuff. He's cool. Not much to say about it. His sacrifice at the end of Natsuno's story branch made me feel something. Why do robots make me feel... Why does, why does a robot death make me feel more than human death sometimes? I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of like, why do you feel worse about a dog dying in a movie compared to the human, right? Uh, moving on, moving on. Let's go to... Do I, do I want to mention Miwako? Miwako, I'm glad that Miwako exists. <laughs> I don't know why. She's just there. I, f I find it kind of interesting because in anime, chubby girls don't exist. Like, ever. I'm talking like the percentage of chubby girls in anime is like like way less than 1% because every anime girl has to be like slim and has to have perfect skin, a beautiful body. They all they, they all just have to be beautiful. And you have Mibuko. I mean, Mibuko is still kind of cute, right? She's Her personality is very nice. But I, just, I find it interesting that they actually made a girl chubby. It's like the most unanime thing to do. But Miwako was pretty enjoyable. The, I, I like the fact that she was just this very frequently occurring character that wasn't suspicious at all, didn't have too much particularly important about her. She was just there to represent like a sort of third party perspective, I guess, from all the other Sentinel pilots, right? So she was cool that she was there. Let's talk about Natsuno, because I talked about Keitaro. Natsuno is pretty much in every facet imaginable my type of girl i don't know why that's the type of girl i like just overly optimistic bright cheery cute flirt kind of would i call her flirty i don't know if i would i don't know very warm i love i love girls like that i really do uh so she was she was very fun i think her actual personal story wasn't particularly all that interesting compared to a lot of others at least in, like in my experience but her personality is just so enjoyable to me that I, I just love her so much and you know i love her with keitaro as well but i guess she's kind of funny because she's kind of like just really into alien the idea of aliens and you know movies about aliens and stuff like that she kind of turns her experiences into a movie because because she's just i don't know that's that's she want i guess she wants to make it fun i don't know <laughs> i had fun i enjoyed her whenever she was uh whenever she was on screen then we go to let's go to nenji ogata I don't like that character archetype. I mentioned this when I talked about Mondo in uh, Danganronpa. I don't really like the kind of 
like tough guy gangster sort of personality but Nenji was actually surprisingly really cool really really actually a really good character I think um, I think he had one of my favorite stories it's kind of like it reminded me a lot of ReZero he had this spawn point basically um, you know maybe I'll talk about ReZero one day too I love ReZero but you know he had this spawn point and he kept pretty much messing up over and over again until he got it right. I guess for the most part. That wasn't exactly how it ended. But it, it felt like I was playing like a ReZero arc. And that was really enjoyable. It was all just about finding out who has this key. They didn't even know what the key was. But yeah, I, I like how he was actually literally kidnapped. And his story starts out that way. You don't see how he was kidnapped until you play Hijiyama's story. And then you see that <laughs> basically Okino was cross-dressing, was flirting with Nenji, and then Nenji got knocked out, and then they kidnapped him and set him up in this simulation so where he could to where he could now go through this re-zero arc and just cons constantly uh, respawn over and over again until he finds this key or whatever. So I enjoyed his story a lot. I still wouldn't say he's one of my favorite characters, but I enjoyed his story a ton. I do like him. This is a really good cast. And let's move on to Renya. Renya is, I feel like he's less of an important character and more of a plot device to help the player unravel everything and piece together everything by the end of the game. His whole um, story branch is pretty much just helping the player. The reason, it's pretty much the last one you have to do, but his whole story branch is pretty much helping the player to piece together all of the missing information. And it's pretty cool. I, I enjoy Renya. He's uh, he's a character archetype that I do enjoy. He's, I enjoy characters that, for some reason, just literally figure everything out, even though all they have is, like, these random tiny clues, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed him. I, f I for sure enjoyed him a lot. There's not really much to say about him as a character other than I, I liked when he was there. Okay, let's move on to Ryoko. Ryoko... Actually, Ryoko's pretty close to being my favorite in the game. I love her story. I love her role in the game. And I like how she's not... I don't know. She plays a very different role compared to everyone else. In her own personal story, she's essentially completely screwed up in the head. She can't remember anything. If you look at the time skip from, I think the... Was it the beginning of her? If you if you look at the how much time passed from the beginning of her story to where it picks back up after the prologue, it's oh my goodness, they skipped so much. Her memory her memory got so screwed over. When you play as her, you have to like constantly just grab a handful of these pills and just swallow them like constantly. And you, I just you just feel bad. I just felt bad. It's just like. She legitimately just is like overdosing on these pills. And I just felt so sorry for her. And yet she apparently her condition was not as bad as Juro's. But I, I have to wonder why they couldn't just give her a, a whole personality change like they did to the Juro to save him. I, I'll definitely say easily, not easily, not easily. I say she's probably the most attractive in the game. Something about the way they drew her hair is mesmerizing. I'd say most attractive is between her and Natsuno. Why do I care Fiction about the attractiveness of fictional women? I don't know. In anime, literally everyone's attractive, right? But Ryoko, I, I enjoyed her at every scene. Uh, she was so manipulated and abused by, by many different people. Not many different, mostly Ida. Mostly Ida was using her, but also I believe Morimura was using her as well. But she was so screwed over by Ida, not only in th her world but also in the in the real world she was being taken advantage of by Ida and I think Ryoko is just straight up one of the most like tragic characters that I've experienced I think I, I said that about some characters in Danganronpa too but Ryoko is pretty tragic almost nothing really went her way she didn't even have a clear romance at the end of the game I believe uh, in an interview in like a panel or whatever uh, the director, writer, whoever it was, said it's up to the player's imagination on uh, if she got with Renya or whatever, because they were the only two that didn't end up with anyone. But yeah, uh, Ryoko, one of my favorites. One of my favorites for sure. I enjoyed her a lot. 
Uh, let's move on to Shu Amiguchi. Shu had probably one of the easier to understand stories and it was, some of the discoveries in his story branch were really cool. When they go to the outskirts of the city and discover what the outskirts of the city looks like and the fact that there's nothing really beyond there, that they're all enclosed in the city and they've been implanted with these essentially false memories of their childhoods or whatnot. Um, I love, I love that. I've actually kind of seen that before. It's technically a spoiler for an anime. I don't know if I should say it, but I'm going to say it. If you don't want to know what the anime is, I guess skip this, just skip ahead like 10 seconds, but, uh, it's called SSSS.Gridman, animated by Trigger, and they essentially do the same exact thing in that, and I loved that twist just as much then as I liked it here. But yeah, okay, um... So yeah, I, I love that twist a lot. And the fact that, you know, he was talking to this idol through his TV, who is also Tomy. <laughs> I don't even I don't I don't even know how that lines up. That was one thing I was kind of confused about, but my goodness, Tomy looks so different. I actually thought that Miyuki Inaba was was Ryoko because she looked more similar to Ryoko to me. Like just looking at her, she feels like she has a, a more similar face and hair to Ryoko, at least in my opinion. It doesn't really look as much like Tomi. But Miyuki Inaba, yeah, I also love Miyuki Inaba. And I will say, I lost my mind during the gameplay section in, um, was it Area 2, the final boss, when they start playing Miyuki Inaba's song? I started losing my mind. I love when video games do stuff like that. They just play, like, essentially what is a pop song and it's a final, it's, it's, it's a, it's a boss theme. I love that. I loved my, I actually was working on a cover for it, but it wasn't really turning out very well. I might have to redo that. I really want to do it, but, uh, I spent too long on it and I got unmotivated. Maybe I'll have to try that one again. But anyways, back to Shu. So, uh, Shu is, Yomiguchi is essentially an F boy, <laughs> but I kind of like him. Uh, I do like the contrast between him and Ida. So essentially, here's what I think happened. So obviously, I'm not even going to give spoiler warnings. If you're still watching, you're still watching. But essentially, um, if all of the, you know, if all of the sectors get taken over by the kaiju, you know, the, the dudes that are invading, the machine things that are invading, the world resets. But you're, if you go to Sector Zero and back up your data or whatever it is you can actually bypass the reset and you can continue existing with your current memories but that doesn't stop another form of you being created so essentially Ida and Shu Amiguchi are genetically the exact same but they have completely different experiences and memories and I think they did a pretty good job at um I don't know, that, that, that was a very nice contrast of showing how different they ended up because of their memories, right? So one thing, in the real world, we saw that Yuki divorced her husband. I think it's safe to assume that she did not marry Ida. Um, and Shu had a crush on Yuki, and he ended up with Yuki. But Ida loved Tomi, who by the end pretty much ended up with Miyuki in a weird way. So it's kind of interesting to see that in the real world, Shu probably would have been pretty good for Yuki. Or Ida probably would have been pretty good for Yuki. But because of his experiences, he fell in love with someone entirely different. I don't know. It's kind of interesting stuff there. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed Shu a lot. Cool dude, cool dude. Let's move on to my least favorite character in the game, uh, Hijiyama. Hijiyama, to me, I, I don't hate him, but he's easily my least favorite because I feel like his character, and maybe I'm a hypocrite for this, but I feel like his character pretty much boiled down to two things. One, how much he loves yakisoba pan or pan or however you say it, which is okay, how quirky, you like a food, okay, whatever, don't care. And um, how hard, the other part of his character was how hard he simped for cross-dressing, manipulative, deceptive, 
Okino, who tricked him into believing that he was a girl, but he's actually not. Uh, I don't like that. He he was manipulated by Okino and yet continued simping for him. Kind of weird, right? I that's That's pretty much the definition of being a simp. I don't know. I didn't enjoy, I didn't enjoy Hijiyama as much. I didn't find his, um, I, I like, the thing is though, I like Okino. Okino had an interesting perspective and an, in, an interesting, um, psychology in a way. So one thing I particularly liked, and this was a nice contrast between Okino and A. So, um, Okino was about to suffer memory loss, just like A did. So what he did was he backed up his memories and I did a thing. I don't even remember what he did, but he backed up his memories and his personality or whatever. And so he was basically essentially reborn with his old memories backed up or his personality backed up. I don't remember exactly what it was, but whatever it was, he didn't view it as being problematic like A did. A didn't want to. A basically wanted to restart as a human being, which kind of makes sense if you look at A in the real world as well. But Okino didn't view it that way. Okino viewed it as, I have this personality, even though it was it's just backed up data, and I have these memories in this body, therefore I am, I am human and nothing can change that. But A didn't really feel that way. A pretty much wanted to reset his personality it was it was okay it was more i think it was more of the idea of having like a simulated personality a didn't want that a wanted to develop his own personality after his memory loss it was something along those lines correct me if i'm wrong i didn't fully understand it but i think i have the gist of it but that was a really nice contrast between those two characters but i guess back to hijiyama so i mean hijiyama's story branch is fairly fun and he does have some funny moments for sure, but I definitely say he's my least favorite character. Definitely would say he's my least favorite. And I already kind of talked about Okino. I don't have much more to add other than I, f I find him interesting. I also find it funny that he's responsible for the kaiju or the demos or whatever because he was a, a bit of a sloppy programmer. <laughs> I thought, I don't know, he was, he was a pretty interesting character, nevertheless. Um, it's also weird to me that you can't play as Okino. You know, there are 15... They always reference 15 teenagers in this game, even though the, it's called 13 Sentinels. You can only play as 13 Sentinels. Uh, but it was weird to me that Okino didn't have his own story, but whatever, right? Uh, let's move on to Erika Aiba, a.k.a. Uh, what, Tamal Kurabe. She was a, an interesting little... Uh, I, don't, I don't even know what to call her. I don't, I don't even know what I refer to her as. She, I don't know, she was a pretty interesting character that was tossed around throughout pretty much every time period, right? I, I, I kept thinking that maybe by the end she would show up and like fight with everyone or something along those lines, but unfortunately she didn't. I enjoyed her in pretty much every scene she was in. I don't have much to say other than she was cute and fun. Tomi. Tomi... I, I'll say this. The worst thing about Tomi is her hairstyle. And that's about it. That's the most negative thing I can say about her. Uh, but I actually really like Tomi. She was one of the character, one of the few characters that wasn't like hardcore simping for someone. Megami simped. I, I'm I, I'm using this word. Okay, let's let's not use the word simp. Let's use the word crush. She was the only one that wasn't like majorly, uh, desperately crushing on someone. So power to her. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, she still, I, I believe, ended up with Nenji, right? It's a pretty, pretty interesting little couple. Yeah, she was a strong woman. I liked her. I enjoyed her. She was really fun. I don't have much to say. I didn't super love her personal story branch, but I did get, I, I did get some enjoyment out of her personality and her interactions with some of the other characters. Uh, she's pretty fun. I like her. Don't have much else to say. I like that she started out as a basically a. a someone singing on YouTube, doing like covers on YouTube, right? And she became an actual idol. But in the real world, she was like a crazy, not crazy, she was like a crazy smart scientist girl or whatever she was. I don't remember what she did. And I think the last character I have on here is Yuki. So I expected to hate Yuki because like I said, I don't like that sort of gangster, tough tough guy slash tough girl yakuza whatever act i don't like that person i don't like that archetype at all 
not a big fan but yuki grew on me a lot a lot a lot a lot she was uh i don't know man she 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 would just save the day sometimes she was a she was a real one she was a she was a real friend i would trust her with my life probably i had a fun time with her story her character interactions and whatnot i don't have too much to say about her i like that i think it's funny that she is the mother of, technically the mother of natsuno in the real world and in the simulate but in the simulation or whatever they're like just really good friends and at the end of the game she has a daughter who she says looks exactly like natsuno which is pretty cool interesting stuff there so i really enjoyed that so I, honestly i could go so much deeper into all there is about this game but it's just there's so much to it and I just wanted to get my thoughts and my experiences out there. But I had so much fun. I love the really complex storytelling. I love the gameplay. I love the cast. I love the visuals. I didn't even, in the soundtrack, the, the visuals in the soundtrack are amazing. I actually read this really, this really fun interview that this website called VGMO did with the, uh, I, I believe the Vanillaware hired this company called Base Escape, which is like a sound design and composer uh, company. And there were like four or five composers for this game or something crazy. And hearing their thoughts about what it was like to produce some of the songs, uh, how they came up with some things or you know, some of their reasonings for how they came up with things, how they wrote things or what their approaches were, were pretty interesting. It was really fun. Uh, here's a fun little fact. So for the mastering, the mixing of the music, what they would do is they would play it alongside the audio, and they said that they would take out certain frequencies, which is a pretty common thing you do. They would take out annoying frequencies that interfered with the audio of the game, which is really cool because, uh, I, I mean, that is something you actually do in music. You pick out frequencies that are a bit overbearing or harsh. But yeah, uh, that's an interesting read. That's that's worth looking up if you're interested in just listening to them talk about the music. It's pretty cool stuff. And the visual, I don't even need to talk about the visuals. The game is beautiful. The artwork is beautiful. Everything about the game is just, I, I legitimately have like little to no complaints about the game. I think it's a great game. I'd say it's up there in like my top 15 favorite games of all time. Really, I, I have like no complaints, no like bad complaints about it. Um, I, I would recommend anyone go buy that game, go play it. If for some reason you watched this and you haven't played it and you watch this all the way to the end, uh, consider looking into it. Maybe at least maybe like watch a little bit of a let's play or just, I don't know, maybe see if you would enjoy it because it, it's a lot of fun and I really think it's worth it. And actually there's one character I didn't talk about, Lolly, Lolly Chihiro, little young Chihiro. Uh, I loved her. <laughs> yeah. She was pretty interesting. Don't have much else to say. I wish I, I you know, should have talked about her earlier, but I didn't. Whatever. Yeah. So that was this. 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim. Super fun game. I super enjoyed it. Loved it to death. I think Vanillaware made something amazing. They are now on my radar of uh, developers to look out for. Atlas published this. Atlas puts their name on a lot of great things. I love Atlas. They're one of my favorite developers. I think I've bought every Atlas game since Persona 5 came out, except for, I think, Strange Journey Redux and Persona Q2. I think I've literally bought like every Atlas-related game since then. I don't know. But um, great game. I loved it, and I was glad to talk about it. And let's see what we talk about next time. I hope you have a nice day, night, week, month, year, life. See ya.